Welcome to the tutorial for ZData Tools DB2 Component ISPF Options. This is an overview tutorial. This presentation applies to both HCL Z Data Tools DB2 Component and also IBM File Manager DB2 Component. The examples in this presentation use Z Data Tools, but I could also have used IBM File Manager. The only difference between the two products is the name. This presentation provides an overview of the Z Data Tools DB2 Component options specifically the online or ISPF options. We will be covering how to access and change the options, how to reset the options to the default values. Some options have multiple pages. I'll show you how to navigate between the various pages. A discussion of global versus local options. How to get help for any option. Let's talk briefly about why Z Data Tools DB2 Component has so many options. The product is complex and represents nearly 20 years of development effort and can be used in many different environments for many different purposes. Options provide three main functions. Firstly, environmental control. Some installations only use uppercase DB2 object names so an option to convert any object name to uppercase is useful. Secondly, dialog control. Some editor users always want to review the editor options in template prior to seeing the data. Others just want to see the data. There are options to support both. Finally, behavior control. These options let you change, for example, which character is used to indicate a DB2 null. Let's look at how we access the options. There are two ways to do this. Firstly, from the primary options menu. Secondly, using the options pull down menu. Let's see how to use both methods now. In this example, I'll select the systems options starting at the primary menu. I first select option 0. There are submenus for the options. I need to select option 0 again and then finally option 2 to display the system's options. If I return to the main menu, I can also use the pull down menu. If I tab to the options menu and press enter, a selection list is displayed. I need to enter option 2 and press enter to display the system's options. Let's move on to the second topic, which is how to reset the options to the default values. All the options panels will accept the reset command. After the command is issued, all the options on that panel or page are reset to the installation defaults. Let's look at an example. This is the third page for the editor options. When I issue the reset command and press enter, all the options on this page are reset to the installation defaults. If I wanted to reset the fourth page of editor options, I'd need to display that page and issue the reset command there. The third topic is multi-page options. Some functions have too many settings to be conveniently displayed on one panel. ZData Tools handles this by splitting the settings across multiple pages and providing a simple method for moving between pages. Examples of multi-page options are the systems and editor options. The first page of a multi-page option is always displayed and is the first page displayed when the option is selected. The first page has switches that control whether the second and subsequent pages are shown. You move between the various pages using the F11 or next page 
and F10 or previous page keys. Let's look at an example now. Let's start with the system's options. The panel title shows the current page and the total number of pages. The key list shows the F10 and F11 keys, although the first page only shows F11, since there is no previous page for the first page. If I press F11, I move to the second, the third, and finally the fourth and last page. Notice how the key list for the last page only shows F10. There is no next page for the last page. If I press F10, I move back through the pages until the first page is shown. There are switches at the bottom of the first page. These control which, if any, of the subsequent pages are displayed. If I deselect the first two switches as shown here, I can then navigate directly to the last page. The second and third pages are not shown. The fourth topic is a discussion of global and local options. ZData Tools DB2 Component offers two levels of options. These are referred to as global and local options. There is always a global setting for an option, however only some options have a local setting. Global settings are saved in the user's ISPF profile and persist between invocations of ZData Tools DB2 component. Local options are a temporary change to the corresponding global option. A change to the local option persists until the current function ends or the user exits ZData Tools DB2 component. Let's look at global options in more detail. Global options are set using the panel's access from the settings option on the primary menu. The options panel displayed shows global settings in the top right hand corner. Global options are used to set the default options when using ZData Tools DB2 component. Every option has a default value. Once you are familiar with ZData Tools DB2 component in your current environment, you can review the global options and set them based on your preference. Global options persist between ZData Tools DB2 component sessions. Let's look at local options. Local options are accessed using the Edit Options switch for a ZData Tools function. The options panel that is displayed does not have global settings in the top right hand corner. Examples of functions with local options are the editor, the copy, print, import and export functions. When a local option is set, it overrides any conflicting global option setting. The local option setting persists until the current function ends or the user exits ZData Tools DB2 component. Local options are used to make a temporary change to the processing options typically for the life of the current function only. Let's look at some examples of global versus local options, starting with global options. If I start ZData Tools DB2 component and navigate to the systems options, the previously saved values are displayed. If I change this option to selected and then exit and restart ZData Tools, the option display is now selected. This option setting will persist until I change it again. Let's look at some local options. If we start with the editor, you'll notice that there are three switches at the bottom right of the panel. These options are examples of dialog control options. The way the editor dialog proceeds can be changed using these options. If I press enter, the data for the table is displayed. Notice that the data is displayed in table format. That is, rows of data are shown top to bottom, with columns of each row shown left to right on the display. 
ZData Tools Editor can also display data in single mode, as shown here. When data is shown in single mode, only one row is visible, and the columns for that row are shown top to bottom on the display. I can change the editor dialog to always show the editor options by typing an A in the editor options field. When I press enter, the first page of the editor options is displayed. Notice that global settings does not appear in the top right hand corner. We are looking at the local options. Notice that the initial display format option is set to 2 or table. If I press F3 to show the data, it is displayed in table format. If I start again from the DB2 edit panel, the first page of the editor options is displayed. If I change the initial display format to 3 or single and press F3 to show the data, it appears in single format. If I now exit the editor and restart, Notice how the initial display format setting has reverted to 2 or table. The local option was discarded when I exited the editor. The current global settings have been used for each editor option. The final topic in this presentation is help and how to access it. There are two types of online help. These are the Z Data Tools DB2 Component Tutorial you access the tutorial using F1 from the primary menu or from any options panel. The second type is field level help for any option. There is a field level help panel for every option in ZData Tools DB2 component. You access field level help by placing the cursor on the field of interest and pressing F1. Let's see some examples now. Let's look first at the Z Data Tools tutorial. Press F1 from the primary option menu to start the tutorial. Select option 0 to see the set processing options tutorial menu. Suppose we are interested in editor options, enter option 3. At this point you can continue to select the topic of interest or you can display the available topics by pressing enter repeatedly, as shown here. When the tutorial is displayed, use the F7, F8, F10 and F11 keys for navigation. F3 exits the tutorial. Let's see an example of a field level help panel. Place the cursor on the field of interest. Press F1 to show the field level help. You can use F4 to remove the pop-up panel. Press F3 to exit the help panel. That's the end of the tutorial. Be sure to check the ZData Tools website for other tutorials. Mm -hmm.